let's pray before we, we get started, right? Let's hook faith together, agree together, touching the service, asking the Lord for grace and anointing. Father, we thank you tonight for your word. And we do hook faith together with one another in the building, those watching online. And we agree together tonight, Lord, over the service, thanking you for revelation of your word and helping us to receive tonight exactly what you have for each one of us to receive. And we hook faith together tonight. And Lord, we thank you for giving me the anointing and utterance and ability and help to say what you'd have me to say and to minister this word just the way you'd have me to. And we do thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we've been on a series for seven or eight weeks now entitled, Not by Sight. And our foundation verse really is in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. And it says there, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Now why is that important? Because 1 John 5, 4 said that faith is our victory. And it's how we overcome the world, through, through and by faith. So when we walk by faith... We're going to walk in victory. When we walk and live by faith, we can walk and live in victory. When we, if we walk and live by sight, then we're going to live a defeated life and not overcome what the Lord would have us to overcome. Let's say it a couple times together here. Say it with me. I walk by faith and not by sight. Let's say it one more time. I walk by faith and not by sight. Now go with me to John chapter 20 and let's get into this uh, tonight. We, we, we don't have, we're not going to review tonight. We're going to get in, go right into what the next thing the Lord has for us tonight. But you can go back and you, online, you can go back and listen to past messages. It's all there. You can watch, listen for free. And if you've missed a service, you can, you can do that as well. But uh, the Lord has really helped us uh, in this series. Would you agree with that? Yes. Um, those of you that have been here, are you glad that you came? Glad that you taking the time to make this a priority. Um, there's nothing more crippling to a believer than to get born again and not learn how to live by faith and, and govern your life by what you see and how you feel. You, you get born again, but you continue to get the results that the world gets. And um, you and I can come up in our faith walk. Yes, we can Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. The word finisher is the perfecter, the developer of our faith. Jesus will show you things about your faith that will, and, and correct you about your faith and show you where you're missing it, where your faith is concerned. And he'll, he'll develop that, that stuff on the inside of you. And you and I, our faith can grow exceedingly. <laughs> and you know, when your faith grows exceedingly, you're not moved by what you see. You're not moved by how you feel. And a big part of walking by faith is not walking by sight. And, and the more that, that we can identify what it means to walk by sight, the more developed we'll be in, in walking and living by faith. And the Lord's been giving us some things already. John chapter 20. And um, we've been talking about, uh, in, in the past six or seven weeks, two ways to, to walk, two ways to talk, two ways to judge, two kinds of knowledge. Last week we talked about two eyes. The week before that we talked about two looks. So the Lord has been theming it on this, <laughs> these, these twos. So, and he's given us another one tonight. Let's look in John uh, chapter 20. And uh, down here in verse 19, it says, The same day at the evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews came Jesus and stood in the midst of them and said, Peace be unto you. Now this is after he had been crucified. He's been resurrected now. And they're in a room with the door shut because they're afraid of the Jews. And Jesus shows up in the room without opening the door. And uh, when what did he say? He said, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so I send you. Verse 22, he said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost... Verse 23, whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. So he wasn't there. The other disciples therefore said unto him, said unto Thomas, we've seen the Lord. But he said, except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails... And put my finger into the print of his nails, 
and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. After eight days again, his disciples were within and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus. I guess Jesus don't like coming through doors. <laughs> he must have got this glorified body and wanted to try this thing out. Because the doors were shut again and boom, he shows up in the room. <laughs> and uh, he said again, peace be unto you. Then said he unto Thomas, reach your finger and behold my hands. Reach your hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless but believing. And Thomas answered and said, My Lord, my God. Does he believe now that Jesus has been risen from the dead? Now the thing about this is Jesus had told them he was going to be risen from the dead. And we'll come back to that in just a second. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because you've seen me, you have believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Tonight we're going to talk about two kinds of faith or two kinds of believing. There is a believing that is, that is based on what you see. Thomas believed when? After he saw. When he saw, he believed. That's that's one kind of believing. And we, we'll call that, we'll call it sense, knowledge, human faith. <laughs> so it's faith, let me, let me read it here. It's faith based on what you see. In other words, I can see it, I can touch it, I feel it, so I believe. And that's called sense-based faith. We'll call it sense-based human faith. And, and people that aren't even born again can have that kind of faith. I can see it. I can feel it. I touch it. So I believe. Is that what he's doing? What did he say? He said, if, unless I see and, and touch, that's feel, put my hand in the print of, in print of his hands, I will not believe. Well, when he saw, when he touched... Then he believed. And, and again, we'll call that human faith. But there's, there's another kind of believing. There's another kind of faith. And Jesus said that it's a believing when you don't see. So you can believe when you don't see. Or you can believe because you do see. One is walking by sight. Believing based on what you see. One is actually walking by faith. Believing without seeing. And we'll call that, we'll just call that Bible-based faith in God. And Bible-based faith in God is, I believe it because God said it, and what I see or feel has nothing to do with it. This is two kinds of faith, isn't it? Human faith needs to see, needs to feel, needs to touch. And when it does then it believes. The God kind of faith, Bible-based faith, doesn't need to see, <laughs> doesn't need to feel, doesn't need to touch before it believes. And that would be walking by faith. Walking by faith is believing before you see, before you feel. It's believing when you don't see. Walking by faith is believing when you don't see. It's believing when you don't feel. Now the thing about this, like we mentioned, is put, put Matthew uh, 16, verse 21 up on the screen. Matthew 16, verse 21. The thing about this was Jesus had told them, I'm, I'm going to be crucified and I'm going to come back. Matthew 16, 21. From that time forth, Jesus began to show his disciples. What was Thomas? <laughs> he, he was one of these disciples, right? So he was here this day. And what did Jesus say? He said, I'm going to go to Jerusalem. I'm going to suffer many things of the elders, of the chief priests, the scribes. I'm going to be killed and I'm going to be raised again the third day. Should Thomas need to see to believe? Could he just take this word and believe? And that would be Bible kind of, God kind of faith. Bible based faith. Not needing to see to believe. But what did he say? He said, unless I see... Unless I feel, 
I won't believe. Say, I, say well, let's not make that confession. <laughs> he said, I won't believe. You say, I will believe. Yeah. Right? We will believe. But what did he say? He said, if I don't see it, if I don't feel it, I will not believe. This is a refusal, isn't it? It's a refusal to believe. He's withholding his belief until he sees something, until he feels something. Are you seeing this? This is, this is human faith. This is walking by sight is what it is. And Jesus, Jesus corrected him for it, didn't he? Jesus called it being faithless. Needing to see before you're going to believe is being faithless. It's without faith. And then he said, blessed are they that have not seen yet believed. Uh, put Mark 16, 17 up on the screen. Come on, walking by faith, when do you believe? You believe when you don't see. <laughs> you believe when you don't feel. You believe before you see. Mark 16, 17 said this in the Great Commission. It said, these signs shall follow them that believe. So the signs would be the seeing, right? If they're signs, those are things you see. And what do they follow? <laughs> they follow the believing. So the seeing comes after the believing, <laughs> not before the believing. Are you seeing this? No, what it said, the, the, the signs follow the believers. So if you want to see, what do you need to do first? You need to believe. <laughs> the psalmist said I, that I, I believe, in Psalms 27, 13, he said, had I not believed to see the goodness of the Lord. The believing is before the seeing. The believing comes before the feeling, not the other way around. Well, I'll, when I see it, I'll believe it. You're backwards. You have to believe to see. And you and I are going to do just that. We're going to walk by faith. And believe when? Before we see. Before we feel. When you believe based on the word, what did Jesus say? He said, blessed. B say blessed. <laughs> blessed are they that don't see <laughs> and still believe. Now what is the blessing? We, you, you can read over that word bless and just throw it out like it's just some religious term. What does that mean? The blessing of the Lord is an empowerment. It's, it's enablement to prosper and have success in any area of your life. Proverbs 10.22 said, The blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow with it. So the blessing of the Lord, it's, it's power. It's ability. It, it'll work to create prosperity and success in any area of your life. It'll, it'll reproduce uh, God's best in your life. It'll, it'll produce it. The blessing does that. It makes, makes rich. Say makes rich. But who, who's empowered to prosper? Who's going to see that blessing go, to, go into work? The ones that believe and don't see. Those are the ones that are blessed and will see that blessing go into operation, go into work. Are you interested in being one of those people? <laughs> I am. Um, go with me to John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Could Thomas have just taken Jesus at his word? What did Jesus say? He said, I'm going to be risen. Could Thomas have just said, yes, Lord, you're going to be risen. And when they said, hey, we've seen the Lord. Could Thomas have said, that don't surprise me. He said he's going to be risen. <laughs> could he have said it? But he need, listen to this now. He needed more than the word. He needed to see and feel before he was going to believe. Come on, he needed something else. Not, the word wasn't enough. He needed to see and feel something to know that it was true and right. How about you and me? Come on, you need to see and feel stuff to know it's true and right? You need to feel joy to believe you have it? <laughs> you need to feel healed to believe you are? You need to look rich to believe you are? <laughs> you need to feel strong before you're going to say, I'm strong? No, all I need is the Word. Don't need to see anything. Don't need to feel anything. Don't need a goose bump. 
Don't need any of that. I walk by faith, not by sight. You too. Thank you, Lord. Now, John chapter 4, and this is, you'll see this is a theme throughout Scripture. John chapter 4. We're not going to read all, all of this here, but let's, let's, let's read just a little bit of it. John chapter 4. Everybody doing okay so far? John chapter 4. You remember the woman who was uh, at the well of Samaria here? And Jesus, she said she had no husband, and Jesus said, you, you, have five, you had five husbands, and the man you're living with now is not your husband. Remember that? He's reading her mail. And when he read her mail like this, in verse 25, the woman said, I know that the Messiah comes, which is called the Christ. When he has come, he will tell us all things. And Jesus said unto her, I speak unto you that I am he. Now, she, she believes it's him because he's, this is a sign and a wonder. Somebody reads your mail like this. She's seeing something, isn't she? And that's why she's believing. And if you go down here to verse 39, it said, Many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman, which testified, he told me all that I ever did. That's a sign and a wonder, isn't it? I mean, if I just started operating in the prophetic and looked at your life and started telling you about thoughts that you, you're, you're the only person you ever knew had those thoughts, that's a sign and a wonder, isn't it? And so she goes and tells people and they start believing. But they're believing because they saw something, right? And uh, it goes on to say, So when the Samaritans were come to him, they besought him that he would tarry with them. He abode there two days, verse 41. And many more believed on Jesus because of his own word. And in verse 42, they said to the woman, Now we believe, not because of your saying, for we've heard him, I'm sorry, not because of your saying, for we've heard him ourselves, and know that he indeed is the Christ, the Savior of the world. Verse 45 says this, Then when he was come into Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did in Jerusalem at the feast. Do they believe? But they believe because they saw something. And uh, he goes down here in verse uh, 47, and it says, When he heard that uh, there was a, a man who came out, and when he heard Jesus had came to Judea, Judea into Galilee, he went unto him. And besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. So this man comes to Jesus and says, heal my son. Look what Jesus says in verse 48. He said, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Except you see signs and wonders, you won't believe. Now, he's referring to them believing that he's the Messiah. And he said, unless you see signs and wonders, you won't believe. Is this walking by sight? It is, isn't it? And uh, the man pleads with Jesus and says, you know, come and, come and he heal my son. Verse uh, 49. Sir, come down to my ch that my child doesn't die. Verse 50. Jesus said unto him, go your way, your son lives. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him and went his way. Now this is walking by faith. <laughs> he didn't see anything. Jesus just said, go your way, he's healed. He acted on the word in faith. And when he did, he got results, didn't he? His son got healed. And when his son got, so when he was on his way home, they were coming from his house to say, your son has been healed. And he said, when did that happen? And they told him, and he said, that was the exact same time that Jesus said, go your way and your son will be healed. And when they saw that sign and wonder, then they believed that he was the Messiah, the Christ. But they believed when they saw. Are you seeing this? And Jesus said this. He said, except you believe, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Can you choose to believe when you don't see? But he's saying you, you won't believe until you see. They're deciding not to believe until they see. And, he, and, and the revelation here is you could, you could have believed before you ever saw. Are you seeing this? Flip over to John chapter 6 with me. John chapter 6. They won't believe if they don't see. But you and I, we can choose to believe when we don't see. Look at John 6 and just look at verse 30 here. Well, verse 29, Jesus said, that, they, Jesus said this, This is the work of God, that you believe on Him 
whom he has sent. Now they asked him the question, what do we have to do to do the works of God? And Jesus said, believe on him that God sent. (laughs) And verse 30, they said this, what sign will you show us then that we may see and believe? Now what did he say? He said, this is what, you want to do the works of God? Believe on him that God sent. And this is what they said. What sign are you going to show us so we can believe? They believe that they they need to see first to believe. Is that the truth though? (laughs) No, you don't need to see to believe. They think they do, but they don't. And what are they asking for? They, They want to see something. Show us something and then we will believe. The easy to read says, if we can see you do a miracle, then we will believe you. (laughs) The expanded Bible says, if we see a miracle, we will believe you. And and so they start saying, they said, you know, verse 31, our fathers did eat manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Well, wasn't that a sign? Didn't they see, I mean, you see bread floating on the ground that you've never seen before, eaten before. That's a sign and a wonder. They're seeing it. So this is what they're saying. Moses gave them a sign. What sign are you going to give us? Moses gave them bread from heaven. And Jesus said, I am the bread from heaven. There ain't going to be no signs today. I am the sign. (laughs) You You can read down through there. Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gives bread, gave bread that was from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. The bread of God is he which comes down from heaven and gives life unto the world. Then they said unto him, Lord, forevermore, give us this bread. (laughs) Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger, and he that believes on me shall never, never thirst. But I said unto you that you also have seen me and believe not. They see him but don't believe. Could they have believed just based on these words? He's the bread of life. We don't need to see anything. This is him. This is the sign. This is the wonder. But they don't believe. Come on, when you walk by faith, you believe based on God's word and don't need to see anything. And they're looking for a sign, aren't they? And um, they keep going a little further. Verse 42 says this, And they said, Is this not Jesus? Now they're getting mad at him for saying that he's the bread of life. They don't like this. Verse 41 said, the Jews then murmured at him because he said, I'm the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it that he says, I've come down from heaven? Now, this is what they see with their physical eyes. And because of what they see, they don't believe. They see a carpenter, they see Joseph's boy, they see Mary, and they're ignoring what he said about himself, and they're going to believe based on what they see and know about him. And are they missing it? This is walking by sight and not walking by faith. And it doesn't get any prettier if you read the rest of the chapter. They get further and further off. Why? Because when you walk by sight, you're going to get off. The only way to not get off, the only way to win, the only way to walk in victory and to stay strong and stay straight is to take the master at his words and ignore what you see and feel. (laughs) This is walking by faith. What they say? They say, what sign are you going to show us so that we can believe? Now let's not get too upset with them. (laughs) Because I I guarantee you that we have some of this in our lives. Right? And, And we'll see some of it as we go. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. They even, they even mocked him on the cross with this. One thing they said when he was on the cross is they said, come down, get yourself down off the cross that we may see and believe. See and believe. That's walking by sight. That's the wrong kind of believing. Walking by faith is I don't need to see. And yet I believe. Thank you, Lord. How about when you pray? Huh? You prayed. And it doesn't look like it's changing. Do you need to see something to believe God's working on it? Then why so sad? Why so discouraged? Why so down? Come on, be honest. 
Because you don't believe. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> Why? Because if you believed, you'd be up. And you wouldn't need to see anything. Come on, how much do you need to see? <laughs> how much do you need to see to believe? Nothing. I only need the word. The word's enough. Say the word's enough. The word. Type it in online. If you're watching online, say the word's enough. Now, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says this. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, I want to start on that last part, the evidence of things not seen. If you look up the word evidence, that word means the conviction of things not seen. Say not seen. The word seen means you don't perceive it by your senses, you don't feel it. And faith is the evidence, it's, it's the conviction or it's being convinced about what you don't see and what you don't feel. This is faith. It's being convinced. Say convinced. Do you know your name tonight? Are you convinced? Could I, could I talk you out of it? What if I, what if I talk to, to you for the next 24 hours straight? Think at the end of that 24 hours, I get you to believe that that's not really your name? <laughs> Why? You're convinced. You're convinced. Well, being in faith is being convinced about stuff that you don't see and feel. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence, the conviction, the uh, being convinced about things that you don't see and things that you don't feel. Faith is believing something's true and being convinced about its reality when there's no physical evidence that you can see or feelings you have to confirm that it's true. So there is no evidence, and there are no feelings, <laughs> yet you're convinced. Man, a guy could preach in here tonight. That's faith. It's, it's waking up in the morning and feeling like depression is on you from your hairs to the dead skin on your toes. And in the middle of all that feeling, being convinced, I have joy working in me right now. This is faith. Do you feel joy? No. Do you see joy? No. But do you have it? I'm convinced I have it. Is this the faith life? It's not seen. It's not felt. And yet, there is present a conviction of its reality. This is faith. <laughs> it's healing that you can't see. It's healing that you can't feel. And yet, there is a conviction. You are convinced by His stripes, I am healed. Where's the conviction coming from? It's coming based on His Word, not what you see or feel. This is faith. Faith that deals in the not seen. Faith is, the Amplified Bible says, faith is perceiving as real fact what's not revealed to the senses. The other Amplified version says, faith comprehends as a fact what cannot be seen are experienced by the physical senses. So your senses have nothing. <laughs> they, don't, they, don't, they don't understand it. They don't see it. They're not tapping into what you believe. But faith is seeing something as a fact that your senses have no access to. It's Abraham believing he's the father of many nations. When if you looked at him, he didn't look like that. Perceiving as real fact what's not revealed to the senses. Well, is it a fact? That you're healed? Is it a fact that you have joy? Is it a fact that you have peace? Is it a fact that you're blessed? Is it a fact that Jesus became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich? Is that a fact? Is it a fact that you're free? Is it a fact that you're clean? Don't let your feelings get in the way of your faith. Don't let what you see get in the way of what you believe. Don't let it mess with your faith. <laughs> Just keep believing. Keep trusting. And again, we're not, we're not talking about a week. Well, I, I hope so. Uh, I hope I have it. <laughs> I hope I'm healed. We're, not talking, we're talking about, I'm convinced. With no feelings and, and no, no, nothing registering in my senses saying this is true, I'm convinced that it is. This is the faith life. Thank you, Lord. 
Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If you allow your feelings to, they will get in the way of your faith. And if you allow what you see to, it'll get in the way of what you believe. Now, what else did it say faith was? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The word substance means confidence or the assurance of things hoped for. The word hope means expectation. Now, hope, Romans 8.24 talked about this. I'll read this to you in the, uh, in the, in the voice translation. Romans 8.24 says this, hope, can we get that on the screen? Romans 8.24, hope does not involve what we already have or see. For who goes around hoping for what he already has? So when you're talking about hope, again, you're talking about something that you don't see. Something that's not manifested yet. Right? You know, when a, when a woman's pregnant, she's expecting a baby. After you can see the baby, she's no longer expecting it. Why? She has it. This is the idea of hope. Well, you don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't expect to have something that you already have. If I'm at your house, you don't say, I'm expecting you to come over. You can stop expecting. I'm here. Right? That's what it's talking about. Hope, once it's seen. hope that is seen, that's not hope. And faith is the substance of things hoped for. So when you're talking about faith and hope, you're talking about stuff that you don't see. Stuff that you don't feel. Hope. And therefore, faith deals with things that you don't see, that you don't feel, that you don't have in the flesh yet. Hope does not involve what we already have or see. Who goes around hoping for what he already has? Um, look, look at this verse. Yeah, put, put the next one up there. Verse 25 says this. But if we hope for what we see not, say see not. Now what's hope again? Hope is expectation. Hope is not, I hope, I hope so. That type of attitude, that wishing, that weak desire. Hope is a confident expectation. And then the, the, the verse 4 said that you don't hope for what you see. If, if you can see it, it's not hope. But it says, but if we hope for that which we see not, then we do with patience wait for it. Yes. Well, what are you waiting for? You're waiting for what you don't see. You're waiting for what you don't feel. Now, now you need a revelation about this word wait, because if you look it up, it's the same idea of expectation. Come on, so if you don't see it tonight, what is your position? It is a white hot, confident. The word patient deals with endurance and steadfastness and persevering. So if you're waiting for it tonight, how are you waiting? You're waiting steadfastly. You're waiting with a confident expectation it, that, that, that what that I'm going to see it I'm going to get it I'm going to walk in it I'm going to live in it I'm going to experience it and if that's your expectation what's going to what's where's your sadness going to be where's that going to go <laughs> one idea of this word hope is a joyful expectation I mean I remember when Amber first got pregnant with grace and we went and told our moms and dads, I mean, I, I felt like I saved the world. I mean, I thought like I was the greatest thing on the earth. Everybody's excited. Everybody's excited. It's joyful, confident expectation because the baby's coming. Everybody's happy and we're, everybody's happy except Amber towards the end, but we, everybody else is happy. <laughs> Why is that? Because something good's coming. <laughs> See, we, we need to get a revelation of how to wait. That scowl you got on your face? Did I say that right? <laughs> you got it. Okay. That furrowed brow? Yes. That heaviness? That sadness? Yes. You're not waiting right. No. You're not even waiting. You're just in unbelief. You don't have any expectation. And you're not in faith. Because if you're in faith and you believe, I'm going to see it. <laughs> I'm going to walk in it. I'm going to experience it. I'm gonna, this is faith. Faith is the confidence of your expectation. And it affects your joy, doesn't it? This is faith. But it's about something you don't see. <laughs> you don't see it. People get bothered. Well, why don't I see it? Because you're in faith. Yeah, but I want to see it. That's good. Stay in faith. You'll see it. 
Be confident that you're going to see it. And people, you know, we can get thrown off because we don't see it. Well, this is what faith and hope is all about. It's, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Things hoped for are things you don't see. <laughs> and faith is the conviction or being convinced about things not seen. Well, things not seen are things not seen, <laughs> not felt. Come on, I, I just want to set you free tonight. It's normal when you're in faith to not feel it and to not see it. <laughs> it's normal. This is faith. Now, now you keep walking by faith because we want to walk in it. We want to see it. <laughs> but if you're upset because you don't see it, are you in faith? <laughs> no, if you're, if you're upset or sad about what you see, then what you see is affecting what you believe and you're walking by sight and walking by sight will keep you from seeing what you want to see. Right? What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. It's being convinced about a reality that you don't see and feel. And it's being confident that you're going to see it. That's what Hebrews 11.1 1 is really saying there. Come on, you need to say it right now. Say, I'm going to see it. I'm going to walk in it. I'm going to experience it. See, this is faith talking. But while you're doing this, where is it? You don't see it. And if you don't see it and that affects you, it's going to move you out of faith. You need to be comfortable in, in some capacity, I, when I say comfortable, you need to get to a place where not seeing it doesn't affect you. You just know, well, I'm in faith for it. Of course I don't see it. <laughs> I'm believing. I will see it, though. I don't see it today, but I will see it. <laughs> what did you say, Mr. Marie? It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. Yeah, I will see it. But when you're saying that, do you see it? <laughs> do you feel it? This is how you get free from depression. This is how you get free from anxiety. Those of you that are watching online, this is how you get free. You don't wait to feel free. You don't wait to feel joy. You get convinced that you have it right now. You get convinced that, that you're free right now. This is how you get free from addiction. You don't believe you're free when you quit. You believe you're free right now when you're still doing it. This is the faith life. <laughs> 1 Peter chapter 1, go over there. 1 Peter chapter 1. Everybody doing okay? <laughs> Come on, when you're in faith, you don't have to see it to believe. You don't have to feel it to be in faith. If you do, you're walking by sight, and that's human, sense-based faith. Well, if I don't see, I won't believe. Well, that's not walking by faith. That's walking by sight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 1 Peter chapter 1. What is faith? Faith is being convinced about a reality you don't see. And it's being confident that you're going to see it. You're going to see it. You need to declare that online too. Those of you that are watching, you can type it in and declare it right there. That those of you that are watching, I'm going to see it. I'm going to see my kids saved. I'm going to see my body healed. I'm going to see my marriage restored. I'm going to see the joy manifest. I'm going to see the peace manifest. I'm going to see the money show up. I'm going to see this house paid off. I'm going to see this debt canceled. I'm, I'm going to see it. This is faith. But when you're saying that, you don't see it. And that's why you're saying, I'm going to see it. Do you know when you see it, you're going to stop saying, I'm going to see it. You're going to say, I have it. <laughs> You're going to say, look what the Lord has done. This is the work of the Lord, and it's marvelous in my eyes. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. Talking about walking by faith and not by sight. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. This is talking about uh, uh, the believers to the church. It's saying that we have an inheritance, verse 4, incorruptible, undefiled, reserved in heaven for us, us who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed 
in the last time. This is talking about God protecting you and sustaining you so that you make it all the way. All the way till you get your glorified body. Is that good? That's, start, that's starting now in this earthly life and after this early life being kept and sustained through faith by His power. That's good news, isn't it? Well, I'm glad you're so excited about it because the next verse says, wherein you greatly rejoice. Is that something to rejoice over? That God's keeping me and He's sustaining me and He's going to see to it that I make it all the way. Good news. Good news, isn't it? But, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness. Heaviness is talking about distress, they're, that they're under pressure. Through manifold temptations, that's a King James way of saying many different problems and adversities and afflictions. Now, come on, come on, talk to me. If you're going through many different problems, adversities, and afflictions in verse 6, that makes it look like verse 5 isn't true. <laughs> you ever been through something and said, well, God, if God's sustaining me, I mean, I don't, <laughs> don't look like He is. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? You know, you go, you got so many problems, so much stuff's coming on. It, it can look like God's not sustaining you. Yeah, but He is, yeah. But it can look like He's not. Come on, if you're looking around and you have many different problems going on and things are not going right, the temptation is going to be to believe, I am not being sustained based on what I see. Are you seeing this? So they're kept by the power of God, and that's something to rejoice over. In verse 5, but in verse 6, it looks like verse 5 might not be true. Go to verse 7. That takes us right to verse 7. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So verse 5 was spoken. Verse 6 makes it look like verse 5 is not true, and that's where the trial of your faith comes in. Do you know when your faith is tried? Your, I, the Lord said to me like this, the greater the distance there is between what you see and what you believe, the more your faith is being tried. When, when it looks like what you see and what you're believing is a long way apart. Come on, anybody ever felt like that? I'm believing for my kids to be saved, but it looks like it's further away from that happening than it's ever been. That's when your faith is being tried the most. Come on, when you see things start to change and start to turn and things are getting better, your faith isn't being tried as much. But when it looks like what you want to see and what you're desiring to see and what God wants for you is a far away from what you actually do see, that's where your faith is being tried. The greater that distance is, the more pressure it is on your faith. Your faith is being tried when you don't see, when you don't feel, when it looks like it's not changing. This is when your faith is being tried. The Passions Version reads like this. It says, Through our faith, the mighty power of God constantly guards us until our full salvation is ready to be revealed in the last time. May the thought of this cause you to jump for joy, even though lately you've had to put up with the grief of many trials. But these only reveal the sterling core of your faith, which is far more valuable than gold that perishes, for even gold is refined by fire. Your authentic faith, say authentic faith, <laughs> your authentic faith will, be the res will result in even more praise, glory, and honor when Jesus, the Anointed One, is revealed. Come on, when is your faith tried? When you don't see it. When you don't feel it. It's tried when you've been praying, been speaking, been declaring, been sowing, and you're doing that, and it looks like you're further away from when you started. Your faith is being tried. So now we're going to find something out about your faith. And look what it says in verse 8. Verse 7 said that your praise can be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus. So it means when Jesus shows up, he can look at your faith and go, Woo, look at that faith. Huh? Didn't he do it to the, to the centurion? Say, well, I ain't seen faith like this and all. This is great faith. He said he marveled at his faith. Is Jesus interested in your faith and the level and the strength of it? And it said, your faith can be found unto praise. This is not you praising him. 
This is Him praising your faith. Not, not, not worshiping you, praising you. Good job. Well done. <laughs> I don't know about you, th th this kind of stuff excites me. Amen. Having the Master go, great faith. <laughs> great faith. You know, it's impossible to please God without faith. God, God likes faith. I've had times in my life where um, there, things were going on, maybe in my body, or the last time I can remember this happened, flu symptoms or food poisoning, whatever it was. And uh, I, I, this happened to me a handful of times in my life. And you just get to a place in the Word and with the Lord, you just completely ignore what you see and how you feel, and you're just thinking that, that you're healed. One, one time I was thrown up in the toilet and wiped my mouth off, and as soon as I did, I said, I, I'm still healed. And I could just sense you ever just knew God's, God likes this? <laughs> and and he, just, he likes this. Your faith can be found unto praise and honor and glory. Well, how does it do that? Well, that that's why we're at verse 8. How, how, do you, how, do you, how do you have faith that's found unto praise and honor and glory? How do you do that? Verse 8, whom having what? Not seen. <laughs> you love... And though now you see him not yet believing, you rejoice. Amen. This is how your faith is found unto praise and honor and glory. It's found like that because you believe when you don't see. You believe when you don't feel. This is good faith. <laughs> Strong faith. When you don't let what you see affect what you believe, that's faith that's praiseworthy. Now this is talking about not seeing Jesus, though you see him not, yet believing. Well, how about the healing, though you see it not, yet believing? How about the joy, though you feel it not, yet believing? The deliverance, though you see it not, yet believing? Can you believe even when you don't see? <laughs> not only can you, but you should be. You can believe when you don't see. They didn't see him and they believed, right? Right? You don't have to feel it. You don't have to see it to believe. Though you see him not, yet believing. Now you notice the verse didn't stop. Yet believing, what do you do? You, you rejoice <laughs> with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Joy is one of the greatest expressions of faith. And it's one of the highest demonstrations of your faith that you have. I said, I, I, you know, I want to find out where I am in my faith level. Just check your joy level. If you're down, it's because your faith is weak. They're rejoicing when they don't see. Why are they rejoicing? We're going to see them. <laughs> Come on. This is why I'm rejoicing. I'm rejoicing when I don't see it. You know why? Because I'm going to see it. Amen. I'm going to walk in it. I'm going to ex experience it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have it. This is, this is believing when you don't see. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Let's look at one more verse and we'll be done for tonight. Go to Habakkuk chapter 3. Habakkuk chapter 3. Come on, why so joyful? I asked you a question earlier. Why so sad? <laughs> well, why so joyful? I'll tell you why. Because I'm going to see it. Because not seeing, I believe. And believing, I rejoice. I rejoice. Say it, I rejoice. Joy. Joy. <laughs> Joy. Unspeakable. Full of glory. We, we've dumbed joy down so much, we thought of some giggly thing. It'll make you giggle. Joy is a spiritual force. Yes, and you, you choose it just like you choose anything else. <laughs> I found I, the, over the past six, eight months, I found one of the greatest um, responses that you can have to a thought the enemy gives you, to a, to a feeling that he gives you that contradicts the words just to go, ha, <laughs> ha. <laughs> Ha ha. You see, listen how fake this sounds. Ha 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 ha. What am I doing? Choosing joy. 
I'm not being fake. I'm making a decision to laugh at that. Are you seeing this? Faith rejoices. When? Oh, when I, when I tell you what, when I see the victory, we're going to throw a party. I told God this when I was believing for my wife, believing for, I didn't know it was going to be Amber at the time because I didn't know Amber, but I was believing for, and I was in the car, and I thought I was being real spiritual. You know, I was praying, speaking the word, and I'm believing for this woman. And, um, <laughs> and uh, I said this to the Lord, I said, Lord, when this happens, man, I'm just going to throw a party. I'm just going to have everybody over and just, and just throw a party. I'm, th I'm thinking I'm being spiritual. And he said, what are you waiting for? Son, you don't, you don't throw the party after. You party now. Why? Because I'm going to see her. And guess what? I see her. <laughs> right? And this is, what, this is when the, the walls of Jericho came down. It wasn't the walls fell and then we rejoice. <laughs> it, was, it was believing we rejoice not seeing. Ain't seen any walls come down. Huh? It wasn't the wall started to fall and then they started believing and rejoicing. This is believing and rejoicing before you see anything. Before you feel anything. Habakkuk 3. Some of you probably know where I'm going. Come on, if you're in faith, you're not always going to... Excuse me, when you're in faith... It's normal to not see it. It's not normal to be in faith and not see it and be depressed and be down because that's not faith. And Habakkuk, you know this guy in Habakkuk. He's not, having a, he's not having a real good day in the natural, is he? Habakkuk chapter 3. Thank you, Lord. Habakkuk chapter 3 and then we'll be done tonight. Does anybody know where Habakkuk is? <laughs> Habakkuk. Habakkuk. It's, you know where it is? It's in the table of contents. I know it's in the back of the Old Testament. I just, they're all so small. Back. I'm, this ain't my first time I've ever been to Habakkuk. I know it's in the back of the Old Testament. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Habakkuk, page 1473. That's where it is. Oh, it's right there. There it is. <laughs> Page 14 says, okay, it says this in verse 17. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall the fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. This is not good, is it? <laughs> Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord... And in the God of my salvation. Why are you rejoicing, believing when you don't see, expecting that you're going to see it? He's rejoicing, isn't he? Can you do this? We can do this, can't we? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Stand to your feet with me tonight. Stand to your feet with me tonight. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, we don't need to see to believe it. We believe it before we see. We believe it before we feel it. Before we're walking in it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I want to encourage you tonight as we're, as we're going that God is not just pleased when the results show up in our lives. He's pleased with your faith before the results ever get there. I said, yeah, because the enemy, he will try to condemn you. You're supposed to be a faith person. You're supposed to be praying and believing. You're not seeing anything. Nothing's changing. And he'll get you to feel bad because you don't see it or have it yet. God's pleased with the faith before you ever see it or feel it or walk it. And we'll talk some more about that further. Father, we thank you tonight for your word. We thank you tonight for the grace and the ability to walk by faith and not by sight. There's two kinds of faith. There's the faith that we believe based on what we see. That's the human kind of faith. Father, we pick the other kind of faith. Faith based on your word. Faith in you. Faith when we don't see. Faith when we don't feel. Confident. 
that we're going to see it, convinced that we have it, we thank you for it. We thank you for it. And we declare in faith tonight, Lord, we don't need to see to believe. We don't need to feel to believe. All we need is your word. Your word is enough. If it says we're healed, we say we're healed. If it says we're free, we say we're free. If it says we have joy, we say we have joy. If the word says you hear our prayer and and, and grant us our petition, then we say you hear, heard our prayer and our prayer's working and God's working on it. We don't have to see stuff change before we start saying things are changing. Things, we don't have to see stuff turn, start turning around before we start saying things are turning around. God's working in my favor. His favor surrounds me. His word is working. His angels are on the move today. His spirit is on the move today. Things are happening in the unseen. Oh, we thank you for it tonight, Lord. Don't need to see a thing. Don't need to feel a thing. Take your feelings, take your senses, and go put them in the garbage and don't pay any attention to them. Don't let your feelings get in the way of your faith. And don't let what you see get in the way of what you believe. I believe my kids are saved in the name of Jesus and I'm not moved by anything different. I believe these bills are paid and this house is paid off and I don't care what I see. I don't care how I feel about it. Those of you that are battling depression or anxiety, I have joy and I have peace and I don't care a thing in the world about any feeling that my body's trying to have. I have it in the name of Jesus. That's how you get free. That's how you walk in victory. Thank you, Lord. And I declare victory over every person who's going to walk by faith and not walk by sight in every area that you need the victory in. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Just want to take a second to dismiss all of you that are watching online tonight. Thanks again so much for joining us. Don't forget, you can always go back to mam.tv and access all of our free resources right there on the website. Don't forget to join us next week, 715. We'll see you next time.